Good morning, everybody. I hope today is finding you well. Um, we have some a really good question uh, being asked this week. Um, and it's what happens when I die. And this is something that a lot of people struggle with. This is something a lot of people wonder about. You know, what happens to our bodies? Do I make certain arrangements for myself? Uh, am I going to offend God if I get cremated and all sorts of things like that? I'm going to post an article in the description or in the comments once I'm done with this video. Um, it's got some pretty good insight on that. But I, I'm going to stick to the scriptures today. Um, talk about what, uh, to answer this question that we have. It's a good question. Here's what our, our contributor asks. I have another question. When I die and I believe in Jesus Christ, does my spirit rise and go to judgment and maybe be with Jesus? Will we get a new body of energy and believe in Jesus? Will we go up with the Lord? Then when the new heaven comes down, shall we follow? Please explain. It confuses me a lot. I'm being cremated as our bodies are borrowed vessels and will fade. When will we be given our new spiritual bodies? God bless you. Thank you for teaching me in ways that are easily understandable. Keep praying for me that I can continue to do so by the grace of God through his Holy Spirit. I can read, but if I cannot understand in terms my brain can't grasp. Thank you. So I want to first go to what Jesus believed. Let's get into the scriptures. What happens when we die? Is it an immediate thing? Well, Jesus talked about death a few times. There was a parable he gave, and, and I'll get into that, uh, or I'll talk about the parable, but I'll also get into what Jesus said from the cross in, in just a minute. But he told the tale of the rich man and Lazarus. And when the rich man and Lazarus died, both immediately went to their separate places of Sheol. Now, Sheol was the place of waiting until the judgment. And the, the rich man who had all the comforts in life went to Hades and Lazarus went to go and, and be comforted at Abraham's bosom. So Jesus believed, and we're going to establish this right away. Jesus believed and taught that the spirit is eternal, that it is aware and awake even after death. Okay. Now, from the cross, this is Luke chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. Jesus said, one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The man was concerned with what was going on. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed justly? For we are receiving the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. So what does Jesus state from the cross? This isn't the ramblings of a dying brain. This isn't the ramblings of a man in pain. This is Jesus affirming his belief that when we die, we are brought, because of the cross, into the presence of the Father. Now, there's other issues with this guy being condemned. That's another video for another time. But today, you will be with me in paradise was the statement Jesus made. It was a definitive statement. It was one that Jesus said in confidence. So Jesus himself affirmed, not as some of the cults believe, but Jesus himself affirmed that there was a spiritual aspect of us that survives after death that is awake and aware, both through that parable as well as through what he told this dying criminal upon the cross. Now, Paul elaborates on this in 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 10. Let's take a look at the word. Now, I know I get into the, the scriptures a lot, but this is where we find what God wants us to know. The Bible and the scriptures are, are what informs us. And I encourage you, if you don't read very well, listen to it. Listen to it every day. Listen to it in a language. If I, I know we have people from other countries who follow us here. Listen to it in the language you are most comfortable with. Listen to the words of Scripture. It says in Romans 10, 17, Faith comes by hearing, 
or faith increases through hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. This is vital. So let's get into the word. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 10. Paul writes, For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home, speaking of our bodies, is destroyed, we have a building from God. So there's the cremation issue. If our body is, I mean, there's people who die horribly, mangled, disfigured beyond. We know that if our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house made not with hands, eternal in the heavens. So in heaven, there is assuredness for those who believe that God will restore their body or God will make new. We will be new and perfected in the presence of God. Continuing on. For this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked, for while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Here is what Paul is saying. We are living the shadow of what is truly life. This existence here isn't truly life. C.S. Lewis called it the shadow lands. This isn't the real world. Where we are going when we are in the presence of God is what is real. This is merely a shadow of things to come. And if you think about this, our, our, our mortal bodies, the, the things we live in, we groan because our bodies ache from, from the, the, the sicknesses and the, the illnesses and the, the, the cares and the worries and the woes and the exhaustion. We groan because we want something more and better because we know there is something better for us. Even in our heart of hearts, God has written his word on our hearts. But Paul doesn't stop there. Listen to this. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So the Holy Spirit inside you groaning for, for what is imperishable, what is immortal, in the presence of God, that perfected state we will be in, the Holy Spirit bears witness to this inside of you, which is why you think about it so much. Let's continue. So we're always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So this physical body keeps us from the presence of God. But once we die, and die in a way that is honoring to God, not taking our own lives, things like that, when we die in a way that is honoring to God. He says, yes, we are of good courage. We would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So that, that expression, to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. That's where this comes from. When we leave this body, when this body is vacated, this shell, as you said, is temporary and perishable, we are present with God in perfection. We can want no bad thing anymore. We will be in the presence of God eternally in, in perfection, in his perfection, and he will continue perfecting us for all of eternity. It goes on. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. So when we worry about the future, when we focus on the future, we should be looking towards the life that is truly life. And that is the life in the presence of God where we will be living forever. When we look forward to that, we still need to be living a life that is pleasing to God here and now in this present existence. We need to be living a life of, of, of peace and joy. Why? Because we are dependent completely upon him. He says to Timothy, for we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. So he wants us to be living a life here and now that is pleasing to him, and we will be with him forever in a life that is pleasing with him once we are absent from this mortal body. But he goes on, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. So yes, we will appear before Christ. Christ will burn away all those things that are, are perishable about us. So that's what this is, is saying right here. The last verse I want to share with you is 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. This was written because the, the Thessalonian church were wondering, well, here we are, we've given our life to Christ. Why hasn't he come back? People have died. So he addresses this. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, meaning dead, 
that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from the uh, heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of a trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, meaning they will return. They're coming down with him. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, glorified in that moment. That's my addition. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Now, I'm going to tell you all something. There's not going to be a partial coming of Christ. Jesus will be returning once and for all to make all things right. We will be glorified in his presence, we who have been faithful. We will rule with him. That is what is promised. So if the coming of the Lord were to happen today, those who've gone on before us will come back glorified first, and we will rise up to meet them with Christ and be glorified in his presence. So whether it happens in this life and we die physically or it happens when Christ comes back and we rise to meet him, that judgment that you asked about, we will those, those perishable things about us will be burned away and we will put on the imperishable. We will uh, rise to meet with him. We will be with him forever, glorified in his presence as he was glorified in the Father's presence. But we have to live to serve and honor and glorify his name. That is is the hope we have. That is the joy we have. That is, is what we look forward to. I hope that makes sense. Please let me know. Um, like, share, comment. Let's discuss this. If you have a counter video you want to send, send that. This isn't about me. This is about us seeking Christ together, seeking answers together, uh, um, reasoning together, uh, as God uh, wants to do with Israel and Isaiah when he says, come, let us reason together. Let us keep searching the word of God together to find solutions to how you and I may all look like Jesus. I love you. I'm praying for you. God bless you.